pets cost money? Maureen is here to discuss it. Let's begin. This is Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Maureen, welcome back. As regular viewers know, you are the Hoyes Michaelis Licensed Insolvency Trustee in Ottawa and Canada. And like me, you regularly meet with people in financial trouble and occasionally we ask, hey, so what happened? And they tell us their story. And sometimes part of the story is that they had unexpected expenses for their pet. Let me play you a clip. We're gonna start with a clip and uh, and then you can uh, you can give me your thoughts on this. The first time I ever went to a payday loan was because I have I have two dogs at home and one of my dogs decided that he wanted to eat a sock and he had to go to the vet and I didn't have the money to cover the vet bill so I had to go and take a payday loan out in order to get him his x-rays and things like that so that's why. So unexpected pet expenses can lead you to be getting payday loans and other things. We would like you to be able to avoid that. That's why we're doing this show. Now, this is one of those shows where I'm not an expert. I don't have a pet. I grew up with cats, and when I was growing up, our next-door neighbor had a dog, a nice German Shepherd, beautiful dog, got along great with all the kids. So I'm familiar with pets. You know, I like them, but my kids were allergic, so we didn't live with pets for the—I haven't lived with pets for like the last 40 years. So I'm not in the loop, which is why you are here. So uh, first question, do you have pets? Yes. I do. I have two labs. Two labs. Duke and Duchess. Okay. Duke yeah. and Duchess. Okay. A, a lab yeah. A lab is a dog. I so assume, original. Right? There yeah. you go. So, um, well, my cat's names when I were growing up were Bilbo and Legolas. So. <gasps> Very cool. Figure out where that came from. Um, okay. So let's talk about the, the costs of having a pet. So we're going to do this in chronological order. So topic number one, what are the upfront costs? of owning a pet. So I'm sitting here thinking, right. well, if the, if the lady down the street uh, has a cat and the cat has kittens and she gives you one of the kittens, then there's not really a whole lot of upfront cost to that. But clearly I'm missing something. So tell me what are the upfront costs of owning a pet? Right. So um, you mentioned a free animal, but there are animals where you do have to pay a breeder or you're getting it from the Humane Society. So some of the upfront costs might just be the buying of the animal. Um, and I know we're focusing mainly on on um, on pets like dogs and cats, but there are fish and there are birds. Those are other common pets as well. So, so all of them do have a cost, but cats, I mean, even dogs, you want to think of a pet carrier for the cat dog crate for the, um, let me just go through each animal. So for cats, you're looking at, you know, the food bowls, the leashes, the toys, the kitty litter, the litter box, you know, nail clippers. Um, you know, you want to have stain and odor removers. That's for both, both animals. Animals. Um, and you do want to consider insurance as well. Um, you want to start that right away because if you don't get the insurance before you know that there's a problem, then you may not be covered. And so that's for a cat. And I would assume yeah. a dog is fairly similar, although I guess with yeah. a dog, what, you've got a, a bigger crate. A bigger crate. Um, yeah. And I guess you got a leash. I know my next door and, neighbor will yeah. walk the cat on a leash, but that seems a little strange. I to did me, that so. too. No, uh, sorry, I did so, that oh, too. Okay, but so. you know, for for dogs, you need poop bags and poop bag holders, and you want microchip ID tags. Um, even for the cat, it would be good to have ID tags as well. Shampoo and a brush uh, for the dogs. Um, that's important. And um, you know, if you're uh, depending on how you do it, some people use potty pads if they're initially training a dog. I don't, I don't know what that is and I don't really want to know. Um, okay, pe people perfect. can Google it. Um, and so <laughs> yeah, exactly. I understand what a poop bag is. You're taking your dog over a walk. He poops. You got to pick it up. Um, poop yeah. bags are special. You can't just use regular bags. There's some kind of special poop bag. Who knows? Know. Eh? I'm, I'm sure they're biodegradable I, or something. There, or some... there are some that are biodegradable. Not all of them are, but I imagine they're your they're a bit more sturdy. So you're not just grabbing a bag and then and then having a hole. Oh, well, that would be bad. Hole, whereas, yeah, yeah, it would be bad. That would yeah, be very would. bad. Very bad. <laughs> so okay, so there's all these these costs, and and there are like you said, there's other animals too. I assume if you're buying a fish, you probably need a fish tank. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're buying, I don't know what, you know, a bird, I guess you need a bird cage or something. 
So Right. But with all of those, you still need with the you need to have the pH balanced for the fish. You need to have the proper food. You need the stones. Right. There's lots of stuff that come with the fish tank. You need something for the fish, depending on the type of fish. You need a toy for them to play with as well. Some of them like to hide in caves. So you have to kind of balance all that out. Um, live plants, fake plants, whatever you want to do. Birds, obviously, they need um, proper um stuff at the bottom to clean out they need a mirror they need certain other foods like calcium and stuff they need things to peck at um so yeah so every pet has extra costs that we don't always think of and all those things you mentioned in the in on my head i'm going okay so that could be a few hundred bucks it could be many yeah. thousands like it's yeah, not depending trivial. on how glam you want to go yeah well of course yeah. i'd be going glam Again, I don't, don't know what that means, but I'm, I'm sure I'd be doing it. So, okay. So there are a whole bunch of upfront costs. Um, yeah. I'm getting a pet. And a lot of these costs, I guess, is what we accountants would call fixed costs. You know, once you've bought the dog crate or the, the bowl for them to drink out of, well, you're not buying that every week. So these are kind of fixed costs up front. Um, but then you've got the regular costs. And again, not knowing anything about this, the first one that occurs to me is, well, food. They probably like to eat food. Yeah. And yep. so... In the old days, 100 years ago, when we all lived on farms, I guess we just fed our dog the scraps from the table, but presumably that's not how it works today. What what do you feed your uh, your two labs? Right. I feed them dog food. Which is... And they do get some vegetables, but I'm very picky about what they eat. I'm very restrictive. Like, So they get some vegetables and fruit because that's a good treat without adding weight. And it's cheaper because treats for dogs are expensive so a dog thinks vegetables are a treat mine do they Jeez. love cucumbers yeah okay cucumbers <laughs> i mean yeah it's basically water i guess so i could i could see yeah. that in the summer what who, who wouldn't like that so yeah. um okay so i have no clue um what a bag of is does dog food come in bags are we talking like how does this work what what kind of yeah. dollars could i be spending for and obviously it depends on the size of your dog you got a big huge dog Absolutely. it's gonna eat a lot more than a little one but yeah. You know, what? what's a bag of dog food cost? How how many bags of dog food does a dog go through? Give me some sense of what we're talking about dollar-wise here. Right. So, and again, as you pointed out, it depends on the size of the dog. If you got a wee little thing, it's not going to go through the bag of food very often. And you can get a small bag and then you're looking at 20 bucks, you know, maybe 60 bucks if you're going for a, a higher brand. You can get the um, cans of moist food. Um, larger dogs, obviously, they go through food more often, you know, within the month they're they're done their big bag and those can cost between 60 to um, 110. And then you also have to, funny enough, there are animals who get food allergies. So then you have to possibly, and that's the higher end food is where you have to specifically buy food because your pet has a chicken allergy or a beef allergy. So, so, so if I have a big dog, I can easily be spending $100 a month on easy. food. Easy. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then there's also, sorry, there's people who do um, raw food. Um, so raw food is also a cost because you're just buying raw beef, raw chicken, whatever it is that they buy. I don't do raw food, but that's also similarly priced. I think you're in the 80 to a hundred dollar range for a larger dog. I buy all my beef raw, but then I cook it. So I'm, I'm a bit different than a dog, I guess. So, okay. So yeah. that, that's the obvious one, but obviously I'm missing a whole bunch of other things that you would pay for on a regular basis. So, so food every day, the dog's eating food, the cat's eating food, whatever, what other right. regular expenses should I be thinking about that I've totally forgotten about? Right. So I, as I mentioned, especially with the dog treats, um, and I know for a cat, some people like to give them the catnip and stuff like that so that they have that treat as well. But, but dog treats are expensive, but I find that, tr well, I have labs, right? So they'll train, they'll do anything for food. So I'm very lucky that way. Um, but if you have a dog that um, trains better with toys, you need to make sure you have enough toys and they like the different toys and stuff like that. So that's kind of a, a regular thing because as dogs do destroy the to the toys pretty regularly. Um, and then you always have your vet bills. I mean, they do need their annual vaccinations. I know those can be costly, but um, our neighbor lost their dog because they didn't get them um, the uh, tick um, shot. I can't remember the proper name of it. Um, and then they lost their dog because of that. And they're like, oh my gosh, if I had just gotten that vaccine every year, 
they may not have died, right? So vaccines are an important annual cost, uh, same with the checkups. Um, another cost that I do for my dogs is I'll get them a tartar buster. It's a knuckle bone. You keep it in the freezer once a week. They gnaw on it because it helps clean their teeth so they have less dental bills Um, because dental bills are horrible. They usually put the dog under so that they can clean the teeth and it's pretty expensive once you have to put a dog under. So I like to spend on knuckle busters as well. Sheesh. And so a vet bill then, if, if it's just normal stuff, I'm going in for my annual checkup, I'm getting my vaccines, uh, you know, whatever you got to do about fleas and ticks and everything you just, you just mentioned there. Again, I'm looking yeah. at at least a hundred bucks when I walk into the vets, right? No, probably about two fifty. Two fifty. I just, I just took Duchess in uh, for her vaccines and to get everything that she needed was two fifty. Now, granted, she's still young, so she got the rabies shot. Um, so eventually, that doesn't become an annual thing. I don't remember. I just show up and say, give her what you do. What they, they got to do. Do what you got to do. So, but I do know it'll go down next year, and then in a couple of years, it'll go back up. So you're ranging between, I don't know, eighty bucks to two fifty. And then if you are also buying flea and tick prevention, heartworm prevention, that's adding depending on the size of your dog around seventy bucks, maybe fifty to one hundred bucks for that. Because when I took Duke in for his shots, it was like. 400 so because i was getting the tick stuff so fleas you prevent them by a shot or do you put a collar on or how does this work i actually so the i get um the pill from the um the vet that they take internally because it'll do the flea ticks and heartworm kind of thing um there's an oil that you can get to put on the back of your your animal that will do it's um it's a preventative for the fleas and ticks there's a collar you can get for your cats um and then i love the um the electronic tag that i have for the dogs to it um it's a flea um, and no, sorry, it's a tick preventer, but it's just an electronic signal. So my first year living out in the country, the dogs kept bringing in ticks in the house and one attached to my son. It was not a wonderful experience. I got these electronic tags are like 50 bucks each. Um, but um, we did, they didn't, they stopped bringing in the ticks. So I don't know what it's doing, but I love it. Wow. And there's also a spray that you can buy. But, yeah, yeah, it seems like a lot of research you got to do to to understand this. The other thing that pops yeah. into my head here is, and I know our neighbors have this. Um, you can you can get the electronic fence around your property. And yes, good point. I, I don't understand how it works, other than there's a wire in the ground, and you put a collar on the dog, and if the dog walks over the wire, I guess he gets zapped and goes, "Hey, I'm not going to walk over there," so it keeps yeah. them in the yard. Um, yep. And that's a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah, that would not um, be trivial, yeah. I would think. It depends how big your yard is, I guess, but you're running a wire all around the perimeter and then powering it or something. So that's a big right. thing too. So, And some dogs run right through it. Um, so it doesn't even help. Um, some dogs. So with our dogs, what we had done is we bought, it was... I was on Amazon. I don't always like to buy, um, I like to buy local, but sometimes I buy on Amazon. Um, it was a, um, it was a shock collar type thing. It was like an electric fence, um, but not running wire. So for $900 or 800, was it nine? No, it's nine if we get it for the second. Sorry, it was $600 for Duke. Um, and then that just kept him in a perimeter because we thought, well, we're not going to spend a few thousand dollars for the fence if it's not going to work for him so let's buy the cheaper version and see if it works and see if we even need to get the fence so that's kind of what we did to save some costs yeah, and once you get the dog trained then it's like okay well this is where i where i have to hang out so yeah okay so we've talked about the upfront costs including an electric fence which we hadn't even thought of and then the right. regular costs is there anything Wait. else on those two lists Yes, sorry, it's spaying and neutering. That's, spaying that's, and neutering. It's not quite upfront, but it's not a regular cost, but it is something that you have to consider. Kind of more in the um, middle of the back And it can be it 200 to $800. 200 to $800. Um, my niece told me that the vet told her for her cat to, to uh, spay it would be $1,000. And I was like, what? That's insane. Go to a different vet. <laughs> Jeez, you, you, you must be able to learn how to do that yourself. I don't know how hard that can be. Probably. I know. We used to do it to the pigs on the farm. Well, there you but go. I, yes. I wouldn't do it to my to my cats. But um, 
so the other thing too is things that they destroy. So we don't always think about that. And no matter how good your animal is, eventually they'll destroy something. Like Duke destroyed the um, bottom of our, our couch. It was fairly new, <laughs> but he didn't really destroy much else, right? But so every animal has my, I know people whose dogs, they've they've chewed the drywall. So whatever chewed corner they the see, drywall. they'll chew the drywall. So there's always that cost to think of. It's not necessarily an ongoing, well, I don't know. Things that they destroy is kind of ongoing. It's sporadic, but they will always do something that's annoying. And I would say travel costs. If you're going to travel, you need to board your animal. That's something to consider as a cost. And um, training. So for a dog, I, it's really important to have your dog trained. Um and there's like special Is people it, you can take them to to help you help you learn how to do that then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And when I when I go for runs on the, the trail by my place, there's lots of people walking their dogs and you can tell some of them are like young. And so they're on the leash and they're just all, you know, ready to go. And then yeah. there's others that are probably a little bit older, but they're also well trained. And I come running by and they just look at me and they go, yeah, yeah I don't care. You, not even a, an act. I'm not really running. I'm more like jogging, but the, uh, right. you, you can tell that, and, and there are many where the owners, cause I'm, there's not a whole lot of people on the trail when I'm out there early in the morning, they'll see me coming and they'll say to the dog, okay, you sit there and dog right. just sits there and I run by and then they say, okay, let's go. So I'm, I'm a big believer in, uh, in training. So, um, and I think the other thing we had with our cats was a scratching post. You got to have something for them yes. to, to use, I guess, yeah. to, um, and I guess if you're going to keep your cat indoors, well, maybe you're going to do something with their claws or something too, but, um, okay. Yes. So we've talked about the upfront and the regular. Now, what, what gets everyone in life, whether you have a pet or not, is the unexpected costs. So oh, yeah. the vast majority of our clients, when we ask them what happened is like, well, this unexpected thing happened. I lost my job or what, you know, my car broke down or whatever. So tell me what are the unexpected things that can happen with a pet? I guess you already mentioned one of them, which is they destroy something and you, you know, right. they're going to do it. You just don't know what it's going to be. What are the other things that you should expect, but you probably don't? Right. So like the audio clip said, they eat something that requires them to go either a poisonous plant or a sock Dogs love socks. Is that a um, thing? They, they actually do that. They oh, eat socks. Yeah. Duke is constantly, he just carries it around his mouth. I have to, he's a retriever though. They're a Labrador retriever. So he's always bringing me stuff and it's usually a sock. Um, but so that kind of cost, Duke ended up having, we didn't know about it at the time, neither did the, the initial vet or breeder, but he had a birth defect. So that actually to fix it, because we didn't have much of a choice, um, it was $3,000. Oh and goodness. I was so grateful to have the pet insurance because that was not a cost that we'd planned for. Yes, I was a super planner and I had things lined up, but at that point in time, I didn't have $3,000 set aside for the dog, right? I hit, so, um, but we had the pet insurance and, and we got most of the money back um, and just getting sick, getting injured, accidents. Like um, I know my cousin, he's a paramedic. So when he took his dog in, this is kind of a cautionary tale. Um, he took his dog in and the, because it was having issues and the vet was like, oh, we need to do X, Y, Z kind of test because we're checking for cancer. And then because he was a paramedic, he's like, mm, don't you think in, I can't remember what he said it was, like a cyst or something like that, something non-cancerous. He goes, and they're like, so isn't there a different test for us to do that was cheaper, by the way? And and the paramedic was, he was right. Um, so they didn't need to jump to all of these expensive tests. And I know when I had to take my puppy in, when it was an emergency, they had me, I could pay like $700 at the emergency vet because they did all sorts of tests. And when I went to the normal vet, he's like, oh, did you know you didn't have to do X, Y, and Z tests? And it would have only cost you like $300. So they some vets will just jump on, oh, hey, we have to do a gambit of everything to make sure. And you don't. Like really look at your budget and kind of do practical. Well, let's do, is it this first? What is the most likely thing it is? Let's test that and rule that out. Let's not do the gambit all at once. Yeah, I think that's very good advice. Start with the most likely. And obviously, you're not a vet. I'm not a vet. I guess the vet probably knows best, but they also... 
you know, if, if money is, pay for well, their yeah, exactly. They're, they're running a business. And so, yeah. um, yeah, the more tests you can run, I guess the more likely you'll find something, but it also ratchets up the cost. So that's a, that's yeah. a big issue. So, um, okay. So there's all the emergency vet bills that, and we're going to talk about the pet insurance in a minute. Um, um, you already mentioned dog boarding. So that's where we're going on vacation. Can't take the, the dog with us or the cat or whatever, I guess, with a cat, you can have someone come over to your house once a day and, you know, say hello to the They're, cat and yeah, they, they don't exactly. really want people around anyways. Um, so yeah. Or self-feeders, like you can put their feeder on a timer. Usually a cat's good for a few days on its own. I got you one of those have, here in the office yeah. for me, actually. Keep every, every 10 minutes I get some food. <laughs> and so how much does it cost to board your dog? It's like, uh, you know, this much per 24 hours kind of thing. How does that work? Yeah. So what's our, I'd, I've never boarded my dog yet. Um, but I think it was like 30 to $40 a day and to board and they're, you know, keeping an eye on the dog and feeding them. It's basically what they're yeah. doing. They'll take them for a walk yeah. or, or whatever. And I guess yeah. dog walking, that would be another thing. If you're not walking your own dog, then you That's can right. hire someone to be a dog walker. Um, and I guess if you're in the office all day long, maybe that's a good idea. Um, I know in my neighborhood, everybody with a dog, they're out there first thing in the morning, they're out there after dinner. And if they're working from home, they can, they can take the dog around, uh, um, around at lunchtime. I mean, isn't that one of the big advantages to owning a dog is you get exercise like that to me yeah. of all the reasons to own a dog. I think, boy, that, I mean, obviously companionship and all that kind of stuff, right. but yeah. It's not a great day out there. You want to sit and just listen to the Debt Free and 30 podcast, which is what people do when the weather's bad. But hey, if I've got a, if I've got a dog, I've got to get out there and, and walk it. Um, okay. So, and then you talked about, you know, dog training. I guess um, if you live in an apartment or a rental accommodation, they might want a pet deposit. That would be a kind of right. unexpected expense. Okay. So now I want to get to the good part, which is practical advice, practical advice. So that's how we're going to, we're going to close the show. So, um, I think the first thing you should do, and this is my advice to everybody in every situation is crunch the numbers. Exactly. So yeah. we've already given you a whole list of here's, here's the upfront costs. Here's the regular costs. Here's the unexpected costs. So make a list of all the possible things. And so I'm thinking of buying a Labrador retriever and it's going to grow to be 50 pounds. I have no idea how, how big a dog is, but let's just for the you sake. 85. 85 yeah. pounds. And yeah. as a result, my food cost is easily going to be a hundred bucks a month, 150 bucks a month, whatever. And then I've got my, you know, all my upfront costs, which could be a thousand or two or three or four. And then I've got my, you know, the regular costs, the, the vet bills and, and so on. So I'm a big believer in writing it all down. What do you I would say? also add is is a hard thing to think about, and maybe it's easier for me because I did grow up on a farm, but it's very important to think of the end. You're always focused on the beginning, but what about the end? So some people get into a lot of financial costs because their dogs get really sick and they're so connected um, that they obviously want to keep the dog alive, which I get. Um, but you also want to think about what is my breaking point? When do I have to say goodbye to the dog? When? So that that's something important to consider before you start as well. Yeah. And that's a very difficult thing, but I agree. 100%. You should yeah. think about the end at the, at the start and say, okay, here's, and, and, you know, what are the things I will be thinking about? Uh, one of them will be, what's the age of my pet? The older they get, well, the closer to the, to the end they are. Um, yep. And then obviously the the cost is a is a significant component of, of that as well. So um, sometimes it can cost ten to twenty thousand dollars when your when your dog is sick, and that's just for the year. Yeah, which right? is a so, which yeah. is a significant burden for for pretty much everybody. Now you mentioned pet insurance, so let's talk about that then. So yeah. pet insurance, like I don't know, give me give me some numbers here. How much does it cost? What does it cover? How much money can you save? Like what? Obviously, again, it's going to be all different. If it's a young animal, it's going to be a lot cheaper, and so on and so forth. But can you give me some ballpark numbers? Yeah, because I, if, it's funny because um, I wasn't actually going to get pet insurance because I'm like, no, 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 that's not what we do, and I never did, and blah blah blah. But I actually thought right when I was going to do it, I thought, you know what? 
what if they do have a problem? So I got pet insurance and it was about 70 to $80 a month for, for our two labs. And I was so grateful because six months later, Duke was having surgery. Um, so they cover off unexpected expenses. Um, and um, they didn't cover it 100%, but they covered, uh, I think, 90%. It depends on what they covered. They don't cover regular vaccinations, like regular things they don't cover. But if they have, if there's an illness and there's medication, they tend to cover that, which is great. So you're talking somewhere in the $35 to $40 a month range per dog. Um, nope. It's $70. $70. One's $69 and the other one was $74. So around, and again, that depends on the, yeah. the size and whatever. But like yeah. you said, you know, one vet bill that's $3,000 or could be five or six or something, then yeah, it was huge. It's, uh, it's, it's certainly covered. So um, now what are your theories on, so I'm, I'm deciding, you know, I want to get a pet and maybe I've got kids and I'd be good to have a pet around the kids and teach them responsibility and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, right. Should I be thinking, well, maybe it'd be better to get a smaller pet versus a larger animal? Is that something that should go into your thought process or am I overthinking this? No, you're not overthinking it at all, but this is kind of from a different mindset. So financially, a smaller dog is going to cost less than a larger dog for the most part, except for emergencies and whatnot. Um, but the other part of it is it's very important to look at the family style. Some people get dogs, like this one elderly woman who could hardly walk, she bought a husky. And I remember being in training with her and it was unfortunately not a great mix because the husky is high energy and needs lots of running and she couldn't. So I think it's very important to look at your family unit, what you want to do as a family and get a breed that makes sense because then everyone's going to be happy, including the dog yeah, or if, the cat. If we live on a farm better. and we're all out running around all day long, then a big dog who can run is what you want. And if you live in a small yeah. apartment, then probably a Great Dane is not the the ideal uh, ideal fit there. So, right. um, okay, um, what other advice do you have? I mean, I, I think off the top of my head, the other one I would be saying, and again, this is advice we give to everybody, not just pet owners, is, well, you should have an emergency fund because you never know what's going to happen. Obviously, that's right. somewhat mitigated by the pet insurance, but if your dog des destroys your couch, which is what happened in your case, well, pet insurance isn't covering that. You need the emergency fund to to cover that. Um, yeah. I'm a big believer, of course, in avoiding debt. That's why I played that clip off the top of the show. You want to be thinking in advance because if you're going into debt for anything, but certainly for your pet, that's going to put you in a financial bind going forward. What other practical advice do you have that you would uh, you would like to share with people? Um, so. Um Obviously, yeah, so you had mentioned having the emergency fund to try to help you avoid debt. Absolutely. Um, just to go back a bit, when you are thinking about getting a dog and you can't afford a dog from a breeder and you're not getting it free, like I said, um, getting a rescue might be a good alternative because they'll be spayed, neutered, they'll have all of their microchip stuff. You do have to pay something, but it's a bit cheaper. So that's something to always think about. And then um, we've mentioned the toys and the costs of the toys and, and whatnot. Um, I would say get creative with toys. Like I said, with the, the dog treats, I was doing them pretty regularly. And then I was like, this is expensive. So my dogs got used to having cucumbers. So I give them the ends. You know, if we have ends of the chicken that we're not eating, um, I put it in the freezer and I use that as treats, right? So you can um, get creative with different types of treats that are cheaper that they like and toys, right? You can get... Um, a holy ball from like the dollar store and a flannel blanket and cut strips off the flannel blanket, put it through the holy ball and, and um, just tie it off and it'll create this big fun ball for your dog. And it costs you like three bucks, right? Whereas if you're buying that, you know, um, toy in a store, it's 10 to $15, right? So get creative with the, um, with the toys that you buy. Um, even like cats love box boxes, sorry. Um, they love paper. You can um, crinkle up tin foil. Um, I have, um, my boys have a, oh, what's that pen called? It just shoots at the, um, the red light. A laser. A red light pen. Laser a laser pen. pen. Yeah. yeah, they have a laser pen. The dogs love it. It's the, it, they got it for like two bucks somewhere. And the dogs just, and the cats love it too. So it's a quick way to play with the dog or get entertainment for yourself as they freak out trying to chase this. So there's definitely like, think of cheaper creative ways to have entertainment for your dog because 
Um, a bored pet is a destructive pet, um, but you don't want to spend lots of money on on um, on fancy things because you don't need it. Yeah, same with a bored kid is a destructive kid. So, yeah. and and when you say a holy ball, you mean a ball with holes. We're not making a religious yes. statement here. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to, to make sure we don't have to have the ball <laughs> yeah, blessed. No, it was not to, blessed. Okay, in order to have <laughs> the, the ball pet pay with it. So, oh, like a whipple ball or something like that. Yeah, that they anyways, can or, that they can play the with. The so. balls. Yeah. Well, excellent. I think that's fantastic advice. We've gone through a whole bunch of stuff. So um, anybody who is considering getting a pet, well, there you go. You can look at the upfront costs, the ongoing costs, and then the unexpected ones. And we've given a bunch of practical advice on that. And then if you already have a pet, well, here's some things to think about. Maybe considering pet insurance is a good idea. And then I think you've given some very practical advice, including the holy ball, which I think I'm going to start marketing that, <laughs> the debt free and 30 holy ball um, to, uh, to keep the cost down. So Maureen, thank you very much for being here. I think that was a uh, great thank advice. You. Thank you. Awesome. So there you go. Advice on keeping, uh, you know, having a pet, but keeping the, the cost down. So if you've got, um, other advice and I'm sure people have hundreds of different ideas, please leave a comment in the show notes, um, either on YouTube or Spotify or wherever you're watching. The show of course is available on YouTube every Saturday morning. And so if you haven't done so already, like subscribe, notification bells, you know, the, you know, the whole drill, just, just do all that kind of stuff. Um, we're also on all the audio podcasting platforms, Spotify, Apple podcasts, all the rest of them. So again, click the notification bell, subscribe. So you get the show every week. That is our show for today. Until next week, thanks for listening. I'm Doug Hoyes. That was Debt Free in 30.